Hello everyone. Today we'll be starting with a topic on key managerial personnel, that is KMPs. Let's understand first the definition of KMPs as defined under section 2, subsection 51 of the Act. This section number is important for examination purpose, so do remember the number, that is 2 by 51, defines KMP, that is key managerial personnel. Before moving into the in, uh, intricacies of the definition, let us understand in layman terms, what is a KMP, who is it, who is a KMP, and why KMPs are at all required, right? So let us understand about it. So that's about the little background of our topic of the day. So here, KMP means that key managerial personnel. Managerial personnel, we have always know that these are the people who are actually running the management of the, or uh, running the affairs of the management of any corporate entity, right? And they are the key person because they form the senior management team of the um, company, right? And they work along with the board of directors. So they are one level below the board is the senior management team and they are the part of the senior management team. And obviously if you are handpicked by the board of directors and they are placed in the board of directors right so they are the part of few of them are part of the board of directors as may be decided by the board and in future obviously when we are discussing this definition we'll be going into the details about it that who can become KMP, kmp and how kmps are appointed and are shortlisted so the, we understand that the key managerial personnel are also the administrators of the company or a corporate entity so obviously they have a lot of powers with them and with powers obviously great responsibilities also come right so how to use their powers we learn more in detail about the specific kmps in upcoming days before that let us understand the definition of kmp so key managerial personnel in relation to a company means these parties so six parties are there or six people are there who can become who are the designated kmps as per this section so first one is ceo chief executive officer or managing director or manager so any one of the one of uh, can one of this any one of it can be there right if a ceo is there no requirement of md or manager but if an md is there no requirement of other two but if a company has two or more uh, people together, it's okay, no problem. But their powers are same. Their rank is also same. And obviously, managing director holds the substantial powers of management. And that too, manager also does the same. But this manager is not obviously the normal manager, like normal general manager or normal manager, uh, like sales manager. Or, that is not the case. This manager is equivalent the same post or the same rank of a managing director, right? Who has the substantial powers of management. So either CEO, MD or manager can be said KMP. Next comes the company secretary. So come the secretary of the company is also a KMP. Next are the whole time directors. So according to the strength of the board and the work and the business of the company, they have the whole time directors of right so they can be two three or more than that as well if the company's business requires so so whole time directors are also KMPs and next is the chief financial officer the CFO of the company fifth condition says that such other officers not more than one level below the directors who is in whole time employment designated as KMP by board this means that there are conditions how to select the KMP. KMPs are selected or picked from the senior management team of the company. So which is obviously the board is the ultimate authority. We can say supremo uh, of the control power is of, of the company has in the hands of board of directors who decide much more all the factors and right? all the policies are framed at the board level. So board of directors one level below working is the working happens is the senior management personnel or the senior management team. So they are the senior management personnel. And from there, the, the board of directors 
will be picking up few and they will be designating them as a KMP. And these senior management personnel are the whole time employees of the company. So obviously, if a person want and if his health and his uh, will is there to work for more than companies, more than two to three companies simultaneously, he can do so, right? But the obviously the duration of the time and permits, whichever way, like we have just 24 hours. So how he wants to allocate the time and how much time he will be working with which employer is his, his own choice. So it can happen. But here we are talking about the whole time employment. So obviously, if a KMP is appointed, he will just be working for this company. So senior management team, one level below from there, a person can be picked. And he should be a whole time employment, him whole time employee of the company. Plus, the, he, that person should be designated means the board has to uh, make a uh, means convene a board meeting pass a board resolution appointing him as a kmp and in that resolution specifying that such and such person like the chief financial officer to already that he is a kmp but the chief investment officer or chief technical of, uh, officer or chief information technology officer right so these officers like chief risk officers these officers can be designated as KMPs by the board of directors if the board requires so. So they must be designated as KMPs. If they are not designated so, then they will be just be a part of senior management team, but they'll not be said to be KMPs. Such are the officers as may be prescribed. So government is open. This is open condition. They can add few more names or few more posts can be added with the help of rules. Till now, no more posts are there. So obviously, we can conclude that CEO or managing director or manager or company secretary, full-time directors, CFO, and other people, other officers who are designated by the board of directors as KMP and those who are in the whole-time employment and from the senior management team, one level below the board, can be designated as KMPs. And those who are designated as KMPs will be said to be KMPs. Now, today's focus section is section 203, read with rule 8 and 8A of the company's appointment and remuneration of managerial personnel rules 14. So, we need to remember the section number 203. 203 defines KMPs, means the 2 by 4. 2 by 51 actually defines KMPs, but the more provisions with respect to KMPs or specific provisions with respect to KMP is given under section 203 of the Act, read with Rule 8 and 8A. So let's understand about which companies require to mandatorily appoint KMPs. Every listed company, every listed company in India, and every unlisted public company, unlisted public company, having a paid up share capital, of greater than equals to 10 crore rupees shall have the following whole time KMPs. So KMPs are whole time right appointment. So they are whole time KMPs. These three people must be present if the, it's a listed company or it is a unlisted public company having a paid up share capital of greater than equals to 10 crore rupees. Limits need to be remembered. Now, which KMPs should be there? managing director or CEO or manager, or if any of the three is not present in a company, if no, no MD, no CEO, or no manager, then whole time directors are said to be KMPs there. Then company secretary and the chief financial officer. Provided that individual shall not be appointed or reappointed. <laughs> individual shall not be appointed or reappointed as the chairperson of the company in pursuance of the articles of the company, as well as the MD or CEO of the company at the same time after the date of commencement of this act, unless, so let us understand this, that one individual who is designated or who is MD of a company, can he become the chairperson of the company at the same time? The answer is no. Law specifically prohibits that because one person, the responsibility to the some extent he should take, not more than that, right? And authority and responsibility should also be divided among different people. So we have the balanced kind of a board, board of directors. 
right so md will be a separate person and the chair person of the company will be also a separate person so two different individuals should be having holding the two different post md and c chair person should be two different people or md or ceo or ceo or chair person should be as two different person but there is a exception that when the articles of the company who which are the bylaws of the company so articles of the company in which actually uh internal management of the company is guided through articles of the company so if the articles of the company have provided otherwise then we need to check the provisions of articles and act accordingly next thing is that if the company is having the multiple businesses right so if it is a large conglomerate like itc hul png other companies so these companies have a separate line of business separate products and separate businesses are there or if a company is having a geographical presence around the globe or across the globe then we can say that these companies have the specific regional heads as well like south asia president or chairman or whatever chairperson or a, or a head of the business of pepsico so this way if the company is mnc kind of a company they will have a multiple businesses in multiple obviously countries so if the company has a multiple business right then that company can appoint one or more ceos for each such business as obviously may be notified by the central government so obviously here if for itc is there so one i want a tobacco head will be there so one tobacco ceo will be there who's handling just that business segment next segment will be of the fmcgs so in fmcg also they have varieties of goods and products so they can have separate business units and they can have a separate ceo for each fit so that is permitted right so a conclusion we can understand that the provision says that md or ceo or means any one of any one of it can be there right and these two any one of the uh, it can be there and the md and the chairperson will be two separate people not the same one now coming to the other provisions so till now we understood that the company has to appoint who is a listed company or a public company having a paid up share capital of greater than equals to 10 crore rupees have these whole time kmps but there was no no mention about the private companies so do private companies required to appoint these kmps or do private companies required to appoint company secretaries that's the question so private companies prima facie rule 8 doesn't apply to the private companies right because here we understand that the listed companies and the other public companies having the paid up share capital of 10 crore or more has to have these three kmps compulsorily that is md cs or cfo right but if the company is a private company the private company does not require to appoint cs right which we can understand from rule 8 but we need to go and visit rule 8a rule 8a governs the appointment of company secretary in private companies as well so all the private companies required to appoint the company secretary the answer is no only those private companies whose paid up share capital is greater than equals to 10 crore rupees shall have a whole time cs right so i uh, we can say in conclusion that rule 8a speaks about the appointment of the company secretary in the private companies whose paid up share capital is greater than equals to 10 crore rupees but if the private companies paid up share capital is less than 10 crore rupees they don't require mandatorily by the act or law to appoint a company secretary whole time employment whole time cs not required but if but still the work of cs is always present in any corporate entity so they require if they voluntarily want to appoint they can do it because cs is said to be the chief compliance officer of the company now coming to the other kmps like md and cfo or ceo or other other directors whole time directors do private companies require to appoint them answer is no if obviously because 8a just speaks about the cs and not other kmps but generally we have managing directors also in private companies so now let's talk about the appointment of kmps so who has the authority to appoint kmps so every whole time kmp right so all whole time kmps like md cs cfo c f o then ceo managers these are appointed by the board of directors 
so board will be choosing them so we have to convene a board meeting and pass a board resolution for the appointment of kmps right so in that board resolution the terms and conditions of appointment will be laid down it will be mentioned along with that the remuneration uh, clauses will also be added under the terms and conditions of appointment and obviously they will be appointed through the authority of board by passing the board resolution and they are considered to be the whole time employees of the company and they are also get a letter of appointment from the company now kmps so they report they their position is a whole time in nature so obviously they have to work with one company they cannot be working with a two or more companies simultaneously so a whole time kmp shall not hold office in more than one company except one exception is there except in case of its subsidiary company at the same time so if a company secretary of company a which is a parent company of company b company b is a subsidiary company company a is a parent company then obviously a whole time cs appointed by a parent company can also work as a company secretary of its subsidiary b company at the same time it is allowed now coming to the next thing provided that nothing contained in the subsection shall disentitle a kmp from being a director of any company with the permission of the board so for board's permission is required and with the permission of the board if the board approves a kmp can be holding the position of director in some other country uh, company so let's see that if the managing director of company a is working with company a presently gets the offer of appointment or interest he is interested in getting appointed as a normal director in company z can he do so in a and z has no relation yeah they can do it because with the permission of board of directors so obviously a kmp can be if the board permits then the kmp can be appointed as a director in some other country, uh, company there is no problem this proviso speaks about the md status very important and very confusing to understand so a company may appoint or employ a person as its managing director if he is the md or a manager of one and of not more than one other company and such appointment or employment is made or approved by a resolution passed at the meeting of the board so understand if a managing director like company a wants a managing director they don't have a managing director presently so they are in the search of md and when they as scrutinize few resumes and other industry also they check the data they understood that the company z's managing director is doing very well right so already company z has a md and he is working there the same person can be appointed as a managing director of company a so company a has approached the managing director of company z to also become the md of company a and company a and z has no relation can it happen so the answer is yes it can happen so md presently working at z can also become the md of company a it's possible right uh, through the board resolution right but if the company x uh, is also being handled by the same person right so x and z is for both he was the md and he is still the md and now company a approaches that the same person should be appointed in a as well that is not allowed so if a md is there he can be working simultaneously at two different companies it's allowed only two companies max he can they come the md simultaneously not more than that but for that what need to be done board of directors have to pass a board resolution and it should be a unanimous board resolution which means that all the directors who are present at the meeting and being called through a specific notice because obviously before the board meetings are convened the notice so is served to all the directors right so all the directors who are then present in india will get the specific notice and they have to attend the board meeting and they have to decide about the appointment of this md and they have to uh, pass a board resolution where all the directors are agreeing for the appointment then only the md of x 
or MD of we can say Z can be appointed as the MD of A simultaneously. Same person will be working at two places, two different companies. Right? So this way a unanimous board resolution is required to appoint the MD in this case. Now coming to the uh, office of any KMP which is being vacated, resulting vacancy shall be filled up by the board of directors. So casual vacancy in case of a KMP is being filled up by the board of directors within a period of six months from the date of such vacancy. So from the, uh, whenever a KMP resigns, six months are there in the hands of board of directors to appoint a new person. In the it's in in the precedence place. Now coming to the penalty. Penal provisions are attached to each section of the Companies Act, and most probably the last subsection of the section will be containing the penalty. Right. So penalties are levied on two parties as per this Act. Right. Company being a separate legal entity in the eyes of law can be penalized on a separate uh, separate ground. Right. And separately. And the officers in default who are prima facie these people, they are the directors and KMPs. So directors and KMPs are the prima facie the officers in default. So each officer in default has to pay the penalty. So let's understand about the non-compliance of the provisions of Section 203. Company will be liable for the penalty of rupees five lakh. And the every director and KMP, so each one individually, every director and KMP of the company who is in default shall be liable for a penalty of rupees 50,000. This is a lump sum penalty, 50,000. Five lakh for the company and every director KMP who are in default will have to pay 50,000. And where the default is a continuing default, right? Then with a further penalty of rupees 1000 each day. So each day after the first day during which the default continues, till the, obviously the default has made good, 1000 rupees will be charged each day. And this will be a cumulative penalty or the further penalty apart from this 50,000 which every KMP director has to give. These directors have to pay 1000 per day each per person. But they are not exceeding rupees 5 lakh. So 5 lakh is the maximum cap for this cumulative penalty. And uh, default, continuous default means that if the vacancy was there in the position of company secretary and which was not filled up within six months of the vacancy by the board of directors, they will be charged this penalty, right? The lump sum, 5 lakh for the company, director KMB 50,000 each plus Till the time they don't appoint any person, 1,000 each day from the expiry of the six, uh, six months time till a new person, new CS is being appointed. So hopefully the penalty thing is clear. Now moving to the next segment. Provisions of subsection 1, 2, and 3, and 4 of this subsection means, in short, section 203. The provisions of section 203 shall not apply to the managing director or CEO or manager or in their absence, full-time directors who are present in the government company. So government companies do not require to comply with the provisions of section 203. So there is a question that if the government companies do not require to uh, follow this, uh, all the provisions or appointment of KMPs are not applicable for the uh, this government company. So do they have actually the uh, KMPs in their place, right? Yes, government companies also have managing directors or CEO or the whole time directors. They also have, they also have company secretaries and also the chief financial officers. Then how these people are appointed, they are not appointed through this route, right? So these government companies are government oriented, means the government owned companies. So obviously the appointment of this key managerial personnel, MD, CEO, whole time directors, they are appointed or guided by the separate rules and regulations, right? So they have been governed by the separate rules and regulations and the appointment is suggested by the department of personnel and training of the government so they actually take care about the appointments 
and they recommend the names of the people in various maharatna mini ratna companies like cil ongc bpcl till now uh, so these all companies md ceo and other key appointments are handled by the department of personnel and personnel training which is under the prime minister's office so obviously they are appointed through this route and we have different agencies who take the different exams for the appointment of these key persons right so government companies are appointed these people are where these key managerial personnel are appointed in the government company in a separate way so obviously 203 of the act is not applicable in case of a government company so we have understood about the provisions with respect to the definition of kmp here right who are the kmps as per section 2 sub section 51 next was the focus section of the day was the 203 of the act which defines the more in detail about which companies require to appoint kmps mandatorily and which who are being appointed as kmps in these companies appointment of md and chairperson was clarified and also appointment of company secretary in private companies and this company secretary's amendment in the private company was a recently amended section uh, rule 8a previously the limit of appointment of company secretary in private company having a paid up share capital of greater than equals to 5 crore rupees shall appoint a whole time cs was there but now the limit has been enhanced and 10 crore has been specified so now less than 10 crore the paid up share capital private companies can lay off their company secretary they don't required mandatorily by law but if they wanted they can do it voluntary basis they can appoint them next we learned about the obviously the uh, how the kmps are appointed and how they will be serving the companies most important provision is with respect to the md's appointment who is already a md of some another company right about the casual vacancy of the of uh, which is being caused due to any reason like resignation removal uh, incapacity or death other cases where the vacancy is been uh, is being caused in the post of the kmp which will be filled up by the board so timeline is important right and obviously the penal provision because penalties are the favorite questions of the examiners they can ask you any of the pay, pay penalties right so numbers need to be remembered they are we need to cram no option and next about the government company very important question that 203 of the act does not apply to which um, which kmps or which companies kmps that is the government companies kmp because already we know that the rational is clear that the government company has a separate laws and provisions how they appoint their heads so that's all for today for the kmp so uh, we hopefully everyone has understood about the kmp and the uh, section 203 Thank you all for your patient listening.